hello welcome to this lecture in this lecture we are going to discuss about the heart okay you know in the heart uh, there are many things to learn for example you have to know about the surface anatomy that's the location of the heart then you have to learn about the layers of the heart then you have to know about the internal circulation in the heart then you have to know about the vascular supply to the heart then you have to know about the conduction system how it is uh, contracting and relaxing okay then you have to know about the ecg then you have to know about the valves that is present in the heart so likewise there are many areas the, that you have to explore when you when you want to study about the heart so for that we will go into the learning objectives first you will describe the size of the heart you will describe the size of the heart okay then you will describe about this uh, uh, structure and functions of the heart then where is layers of the heart okay there are pericardium myocardium and endocardium where is layers of the heart okay then valves that are present in the heart then uh, pathways of blood through the heart okay for example how the blood is entering the heart and how is exiting the heart okay then you will describe about the coronary vessels i have told the blood supply to the, to the heart okay so that uh, that's what we call it as coronary circulation we will uh, study about various branches of coronary vessels then the action potential in the cardiac muscles okay that is a myocardium how the myocardium is getting electric impulse and how the muscle is contracting this is what you will study about in this objective then in the conduction system the sinoatrial node atrioventricular node then purkinje fibers all these stuffs you will be studying then uh, you have to explain the electrocardiogram okay so it's a uh, it is nothing but recording the electrical activity of the, that is taking place in the heart thereby we know what whether the heart is functioning normally or abnormally okay then explain how the speed of the heart is maintained and the force of the contraction of the heart and how the inner nervous system is playing the role in the heart okay then cardiac cycles okay like the mechanical events that is taking place in the heart then also you will study about the stroke volume and the heart rate these are all the objectives that you will uh, study okay so uh, you know before starting this let me tell you there are few interesting points that you have to understand okay you know what the heart is formed in the second week of intrauterine life and it keeps on beating non stop until you die okay when there is uh, cardiac arrest it means it's your death okay some people may live for 100 years some people live for 70 years so for the whole lifetime the heart will be beating okay and you know what another interesting uh, this is one interesting uh, point another interesting point is your uh, blood average adult has 5 liters of blood okay so this 5 liters of blood is uh, i mean it is circulating every minute through the heart in your body this is another one interesting fact okay and moreover heart is a modified blood vessel isn't it uh, so uh, the blood vessel kinks in the intrauterine life during the formation and then the chambers are formed okay so in fact the heart that is present in the intrauterine life is different the heart that is present outside the intrauterine life is different okay you will understand uh, how the fetal circulation and the adult circulation okay so these are all many interesting things that you have to know about the heart okay so um, coming to the heart the heart is mainly acting as a transport system okay 
in fact the heart is actually it is actually two pumps side by side the heart uh, side receives oxygenated oxygen poor blood in the right side and then in the left side there is oxygen rich blood so we will uh, see about the circulation okay what you see here is this blue color and this red color okay this is the heart and this is the human body and this is a lung you know this isn't it so what is the function of the lung to take the carbon dioxide in the blood and give add oxygen to the red blood cells that's the function of the lung okay so what is the role of the heart to give oxygenated blood to all the cells in the body and take deoxygenated blood from all the cells of the body and take back to the right heart okay from right right heart it has to give back to the give the give the blood back to the lung okay for the oxygenation okay you see the right side of the heart we it is colored in blue color all this area is colored in blue color all this area is colored in blue color okay so the left side of the heart is colored in the red color the left side of the heart is colored in red color you can see here let me show you okay see the right side of the heart is colored in blue color whereas the left side of the heart is colored in red color so red color denotes oxygenated blood that is circulating only in the arteries okay whereas blue color denotes deoxygenated blood that is circulating only in the veins of the body okay so in the blood vessels you will study about the difference between the arteries and the vein that is in the next chapter now we will focus only in the heart okay so the heart uh, this is the algorithm this is the map how the heart is uh, located i mean the functioning in the body okay coming to the heart the heart is the size of the shape of your fist you have to keep your thumb inside your uh, uh, palm and you have to close your fingers that is the size of the fist okay so when you look at the size of the heart the heart size is the size of your fist which weighs around 250 to 350 gram okay so when you when it comes to the location when it comes to the location of the heart this heart is located in between the two lungs okay for example this is the uh, right lung this is the right lung and this is the left lung this is the left lung and underneath you have the diaphragm underneath you have the diaphragm so the space between the two lung is called as the mediastinum we call it as mediastinum so we divide this mediastinum into superior mediastinum and this is superior this is superior and this is inferior mediastinum okay the inferior mediastinum we divide it into anterior middle and posterior mediastinum okay so the heart is located exactly in the middle and the posterior mediastinum this is the place where the heart is located this is the place where the heart is located this is the place where the heart is located okay so inferiorly you have the diaphragm in the lateral side you have the lungs okay and uh, anterior posteriorly you have the vertebral column and anteriorly you have the sternum to the heart okay anterior to the vertebral column the heart is present and posterior to the sternum the heart is present okay so it is enclosed within the uh, the space between the two lung we call it as a mediastinum the space between the two lung we call it as mediastinum okay so this is the place where you can see okay so if you see here this is the right lung this is a, this is the right lung and this is the left lung and in between this two lung you know in the right lung it has three lobes left, left lung has only two lobes okay so this is the place where the heart is located inferiorly you have the diaphragm you have the diaphragm and in the superior mediastinum you have all the great vessels blood vessels okay 
so this are all this is the location of the heart this is the location of the heart okay let's go to the uh, coverings of the heart in fact you know this in the powerpoint i will also show you in the 3d format okay in the end of the session you will be able to understand clearly okay now coming to the covering of the heart the heart is having three layers the outer pericardium middle myocardium and the inner endocardium these are the three layers of the heart okay okay you know if you look at the layers of the blood vessel it is made up of tunica adventitia outermost layer that is a connective tissue layer then tunica that is a middle muscular layer and tunica intima that is the innermost uh, cuboid epithelial layer okay so these are the three layers of blood vessel so the heart is nothing but a modified artery that is why the pericardium is compared to tunica adventitia the middle myocardium is compared to the that is tunica media and the endocardium is compared to the innermost layer of the heart okay so if you see here the pericardium itself has two layers parietal and visceral okay so the parietal pericardium is the outermost layer which is also called as a fibrous pericardium the visceral pericardium is also called as serous pericardium this secretes a serous fluid okay around uh, 10 to 15 ml of pericardial fluid is always present okay this fluid will lubricate this fluid will lubricate the heart okay so uh, this lubrication prevents the friction between the parietal and the visceral pericardium that is a serous and fibrous pericardium okay so next you can see here this is the cut section of the heart and this is the fibrous pericardium and this is the uh, serous pericardium okay and the, this serous pericardial fluid it secretes a serous fluid and this is a pericardial space i will show you in the model the next layer is a muscular layer that is a myocardium okay which is the actual wall of the heart which is the actual wall of the heart then the innermost layer is the endocardium the innermost layer is endocardium these are the three layers of the heart okay now uh, as far as the myocardium is concerned you know it is the middle layer it is a middle layer and this myocardium is the muscular part of the heart you know the cardiac muscles you would have studied about a uh, lot about the cardiac muscles their cells their specialities they contain more mitochondria their cytoplasm exchange between two cells through the intercalated disc all these things you would have studied about the uh, uh, classification of the muscles okay so uh, this myocardium of the heart the muscle layer of the heart is receiving around 900 ml of blood per minute okay through the coronary artery because myocardium is the muscle that has to contract and relax non-stop during the time of when during the time when the person is alive during the time when the person is alive so this is what you have to know about the myocardium so when i show you the other pictures you will understand that the inner endocardium is the innermost layer which is also called as endothelial layer which is made up of cuboidal epithelium but the extension of this endocardium leads to formation of this valves and the intracardiac structures okay for example inside the heart you have the cardiac tendine you have the valves So extension of these layers leads to formation of these uh, structures inside the heart okay that's the endocardium okay now you can see this is the mus uh, you know this is the outermost layer that's a pericardium then mis middle is the myocardium and innermost is the endocardium okay if you look here closely the myocardium is a muscular layer of the heart okay then the atrium there are four chambers two atrium and two ventricles right atrium left atrium right ventricle left ventricle okay these are the chambers so the atrium is also called as auricle is made up of thin layer of muscle fibers 
whereas the ventricle is made up of thick layer of myocardial muscle fiber okay so this is what you have to understand about the myocardium and the innermost layer is endocardium which gives extension that is called as the cardae tendine that is called as the cardae tendine okay so now if you look at the gross anatomy of the, of the heart you can see uh, this is the right atrium this is the right ventricle this is the right ventricle okay this is the left atrium and this is the left ventricle these are the four chambers okay so this uh, vessel is called as a superior vena cava and this vessel is called as the inferior vena cava and you know this is the pulmonary trunk this is a pulmonary trunk okay and this is the arch of aorta that is starting in the left ventricle here okay so uh, this myocardial muscles are supplied by this blood vessel that is called as the coronary artery definitely i know you are not going to understand anything when you look at the heart like this and study so better i will draw the picture and explain okay after this slide eh? so that will give you a better understanding so you see the aortic uh, arch and the pulmonary trunk is connected by a ligamentum arteriosum okay that's called a ductus arteriosus we call it as ductus arteriosus i will tell you why that is present okay so this is external look of the heart okay the uh, there are fat beds that is surrounding we call it a pericardial fat bed that acts as a cushion for the heart and it supports the blood vessels and it is supporting the blood vessels there are four chambers that is two atrium and two ventricles the atrium is also called as auricles because it is appearing like a ear pinna it is appearing like a ear pinna okay now the two ventricles uh, separated by interventricular septum anterior and posterior ventricular sulci mark the position of the septum externally okay so now uh, the receiving chambers the atrium is called as the receiving chambers okay uh, the walls are reached by the musculus pectinus also called as pectinate muscles the walls are reached by the musculus pectinus also called as the pectinate muscles okay that i will show you in the model so the, because this uh, pectinate muscle is called as a culprit of the heart because of the location presence of pectinate muscles in the atrium there are chances of interatrial clot formation okay generally cardiac surgeons they scold the pectinate muscles i will show you why okay then the atrium this is the right auricle that where the superior vena cava inferior vena cava coronary sinus is opening the, the uh, superior vena cava inferior vena cava and coronary sinus is opening okay so next you can see this is a cut section of the heart this is the atrium and this is a ventricle uh, right atrium and right ventricle and this is the left atrium and the left ventricle and here you can see the valves this is the uh, tricuspid valve and the mitral valve and these structures are called as a cardiac tendine which is attached to the papillary muscle which is attached to the papillary muscle okay and you can see the thick myocardium in this place you can see the thick myocardium in this place okay so now um, what you can see here is the let's uh, going discuss about the ventricles as i told you you have the right ventricle and the left ventricle in the ventricles there are papillary muscles these are the papillary muscles and the uh, thread like structure called uh, scardae tendine is attached to these papillary muscles and thereby it is uh, uh, attached to the valve cusp okay so thereby once the papillary muscle contracts it pulls the thread and uh, by the valve will open this is how the heart valves are working okay so um, papillary vessels leaving the right ventricles are the pulmonary trunk the vessels leaving the left ventricle is the aorta so if you see this is the pulmonary trunk that is going to the lung to the right lung and the left lung and this is the aorta that is starting in the left ventricle and it goes and forms the arch outside in the superior aspect of the heart in the superior aspect of the heart okay now let's go to the uh, learning objective the heart uh, next learning objective the heart has four chambers and uh, pumps blood through the pulmonary and systemic circuits okay so what are this uh, uh, 
chamber we will see discuss about the chambers and how the uh, uh, blood is circulating okay for example if you see this is the heart wall this is the heart wall this is the heart wall there are four valves okay that is the wall between the right atrium and the right ventricular right ventricle and the left atrium and left ventricle okay and also there are wall in the pulmonary trunk and the aorta okay so this wall between the right ventricle atrium and ventricle is called a tricuspid wall the wall between the uh, right left atrium and left ventricle is called as mitral wall is called as mitral wall okay so here if you see uh, this mitral wall is present is called as the left atrioventricular wall okay and here you have the uh, pulmonary valve and the aortic valve that is opening in the aorta and in the pulmonary trunk okay so we will discuss that so the atrioventricular valves are nothing but a valve that is present between the two uh, atrium and the ventricle there are two types in the right side you have the tricuspid valve in the left side you have the bicuspid valve tricusp means three cusp bicuspid means two cusp which is also called as mitral valve these valves valves are connected by a thread like structure called cardiac tendine and that is in fact attached to the papillary muscles that is in fact attached to the papillary muscle oh, then there are other two valves called as semi lunar valves which is also called as the aortic semi lunar valve or pulmonary semi lunar valve aortic semi lunar valve is present in the aorta and the pulmonary semi lunar valve is present in the uh, uh, pulmonary trunk okay semi lunar means half moon so if you look at this cusp it will be like a half moon you can see it's a fibrous uh, uh, ring like structure is called as a commissure of the valve and this is the opening of the valve leaflet okay it is a uh, made up of thick connective tissues which is made up of thick connective tissues okay here you can see this is the blood entering the uh, atrium and then it's coming to the ventricle then at the same time the blood is entering into the uh, left atrium and then it is entering into the left ventricle and it is going out okay so this is how the blood is pa passing and this is how the valve is opening so when the blood is entering the valve uh, cusp is pulled and the blood enters once the valve cusp closes then what happens uh, i mean during the time of uh, contraction the valve cusp will close and the blood will go through the aorta okay this is, you see the cusp of the valve is closed preventing the blood to go back if the valve remains open we call that condition as regurgitation we call that condition as regurgitation okay so so coming here you can see this is a actual photographic image inside the uh, ventricular chambers you can see this is a papillary muscle and this is a thread like structure called as a cardiac tendine this is attached to the valve leaflet that is attached to the valve leaflet okay so here you can see the valve leaflet is in the cut specimen and you can see the papillary muscles here and then to the that is attached to the valve cusp that is attached to the valve cusp okay next so then blood flows from atrium to ventricle and then enter the lung and the rest of the body so now we are going to discuss about the internal circulation in the heart that is how the blood is entering into the right atrium and the right ventricle how the blood is going to enter into the right atrium and right ventricle then how the blood is going to enter into the uh, uh, left atrium and left ventricle and then how it is exiting out of the heart this is what you're going to see in this objectives okay coming to the pathway of blood through the heart okay as i told you in the previous uh, thing you divide the heart into right side and the left side okay the right side always carries uh, deoxygenated uh, blood circulates deoxygenated blood whereas left side always circulates oxygenated blood okay that is through the pulmonary vein and the aorta i will show you so if you look at the right uh, right side 
So what happens? This is a superior vena cava and inferior vena cava receiving the deoxygenated blood to the right atrium, and from right atrium it is coming to right ventricle. From right ventricle it is going into the pulmonary trunk, then to the it goes to the right lung and left lung. From this is how the uh, right heart circulation is taking place. Whereas in the left heart circulation from the lung. what happens the blood is coming to this left atrium then from left atrium it comes to left ventricle from the left ventricle through the aorta it goes and it turns up and it is distributed to all parts of the body so this is the uh, left heart circulation this is the left heart circulation okay so we call that as pulmonary circuit or pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation there are three types of uh, circulation one is a pulmonary circulation that is circulation between the heart and the lungs okay then systemic circulation that is circulation between the heart and to all parts of the body then from all parts of the body to the heart this is what we call it as systemic circulation okay now uh, the coronary circulation is there that is the blood that is circulating to the heart the blood that is circulating to the heart between the heart and then that blood oxygen is utilized and then it comes to the uh, heart right uh, atrium itself the coronary ostium okay so this is what uh, the circuit you can see the right heart is circulating the deoxygenated blood so the circulation between the heart to the lung we call it as pulmonary circulation the circulation between the heart to all parts of the body we call it as systemic circulation we call it as systemic circulation so left heart is circulating oxygenated blood the right heart is circulating deoxygenated blood okay that's why it is given blue and red in color that's why it is given blue and red in color okay now let's uh, discuss about the coronary circulation okay when it comes to the coronary circulation the myocardium is thick for diffusion to be practical means of delivering nutrients that is why the coronary circulation is a functional blood supply to the heart and the shortest circulation in the body okay the vessel that delivers oxygenated blood rich blood to the myocardium is called as a coronary arteries okay you know there is something called vasa vasorum what is mean by vasa vasorum the blood vessel that is supplying the blood vessel is called as vasa vasorum okay so in that case the largest vasa vasorum in the body is a coronary artery because heart is a modified artery heart is nothing but a modified artery okay artery is a blood vessel that carries oxygenated blood okay so heart is a modified artery so in this case the coronary artery is the coronary artery is uh, uh, the artery that is supplying the myocardium of the heart that's why it is called as the largest vasa vasorum okay then likewise the deoxygenated blood of the heart drains through the cardiac veins okay the the great cardiac veins and the deep cardiac veins and then it comes and opens into the right uh, atrium okay now the there are right and left coronary arteries the two uh, coronary arteries the left coronary artery and the right coronary artery okay so you know you have we have to discuss a lot about this right and the left coronary artery okay in the left coronary artery there are anterior interventricular branches and the circumflex branches whereas in the right coronary artery there is right marginal uh, branch and the posterior interventricular artery branch okay so both this right and the left coronary artery branches will form the anastomosis what do you mean by the word anastomosis you have to understand the meaning of the word anastomosis for example uh, this is a piece of uh, tissue this is a imagine this is a piece of tissue okay this tissue uh, is give, getting two types of blood vessel okay this tissue is giving two types of blood vessel okay for both are arteries suppose both the uh, blood vessel will be supplying blood 
okay so when this artery is blocked when this artery is blocked what will happen this artery will be supplying the tissue and the tissue will not die okay so whereas if this artery is blocked then this artery will be supplying the blood and the tissue will not be dead okay if both the blood vessel is blocked then the tissue will not get blood supply and the tissue will become gangrenous it will the tissue will be dead okay so maintaining the non stop collateral circulation is called as a, uh, uh, anastomosis okay that is two blood vessels supplying blood to one part of the tissue okay so likewise the anterior interventricular and posterior interventricular branches forms the anastomosis i will show you in the diagram this is the right coronary artery and this is the left coronary artery in the right coronary artery you have the marginal arteries and then the posterior interventricular artery okay whereas the left coronary artery you have the circumflex artery and the anterior interventricular artery and obtuse marginal branch diagonal branch there are many other branches okay we will also discuss uh, that separately okay so this is the heart you have to understand next you have to know about the coronary circulation the venous blood is collected by the cardiac veins okay as i told you the myocardium of the heart is receiving around 900 ml of blood the myocardium of the heart is receiving around 900 ml of blood and this 900 ml of blood should come back to the right heart circulation through the veins through the veins okay so that's why the cardiac veins are formed these cardiac veins joins to form the coronary sinus that opens in the right atrium okay so there are three main vessels the great cardiac veins middle cardiac veins and the small cardiac veins you can see in the picture this is a great cardiac veins this is a, a small cardiac veins and the middle cardiac veins they all these veins forms and comes and opens in the right atrium this is the right auricular chamber it comes and opens there as a coronary ostium it opens as a coronary ostium okay now uh, Uh, coming to the uh, microscopic structure of the heart coming to the microscopic structure of the heart coming to the microscopic structure of the heart you know this uh, uh, heart muscle is uh, Uh, some something special you know it you cannot uh, say it is skeletal muscles we cannot say it is smooth muscle and we cannot say it is uh, not a muscle it is a muscle it's a special type because um, uh, this heart muscle is having a lot of specialities okay you imagine the contraction of the heart muscle can even pull a big truck that much force the contraction force the heart muscle has okay this is number 1 and the heart muscle is continuously contracting from the second week of the intrauterine life till your death non stop contracting relaxing systole diastole contracting relaxing systole diastole okay so likewise you know heart muscle it's not uh, like metal or something like that it's a biological uh, organ so for the heart muscle to work we need to supply oxygenated blood we need to receive the uh, deoxygenated blood after utilizing the oxygen then we have to supply electrolytes sodium potassium and calcium for uh, uh, action potential and uh, you know what is uh, the uh, incidence that is happening during the time muscle contraction in the physiology of uh, muscle contraction we would have studied the calcium goes to troponin binds with the tropo actin and then collision cross bridging takes place like that same physiology is taking place in the heart muscle but the heart muscle needs non unlimited amount of atp so for that there is more amount of uh, mitochondria that is present in the heart muscle cell and this mitochondria jumps from one cell to another cell through the intercalated muscle fibers okay 
so this is how the heart mu heart muscle is able to work continuously non stop okay so the cardiac muscle cells are striated short fat branched and interconnected that is through the intercalated disc okay the two tubules are present the sarcoplasmic reticulum is simple than in skeletal muscles then there are more number of mitochondria the intercalated disc that is a junction between the two cells where the cytoplasm is being shared okay then the desmosomes and the gap junctions are the uh, uh, opening where it allows the sodium and potassium to go in and come out okay for electronically couple uh, to uh, to couple the adjacent cells you see this is the intercalated disc you see this is one cell and this is another cell and uh, cytoplasm is connected by this intercalated discs okay this is the intercalated disc and this is the gap junctions through which the sodium potassium goes in and comes out okay next you can see this muscle is uh, having a uh, same like uh, skeletal muscle there is sarcoplasmic reticulum there are uh, actin and myosin and there are more t tubules that is present in the uh, muscle cells okay and these are all the contracting filaments okay but there is presence of intercalated disc fibers like this there is presence of intercalated disc fibers like this okay now how does the physiology of skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle work so cardiac muscle cells are self excitable what do you mean by self excitable okay so you, you know you know when the muscle is connected with the nerve through the nerve the electric potential comes and the, when electric potential reaches that means what then the muscle contraction takes place but what the specialty in the heart is heart is not waiting for the nervous system to receive to give electric impulse so for that reason the heart muscle is able to produce the electric impulse on its own that is what we call it as self excitable property so i will show you that uh, how it happens that is separate system called conduction system okay when you read that you will understand okay then uh, the in influx uh, of calcium from extracellular fluid triggers calcium release from this sarcoplasmic reticulum okay uh, tetanic contractions cannot occur in cardiac muscles if there is potassium disturbance this uh, tetanic contractions occurs that cannot happen in the cardiac muscles either the muscle contracts and it doesn't relax in case of hyper or hypo uh, cal uh, kilemia where there is disturbance in normal potassium level okay so uh, the art relies almost exclusively on aerobic respiration so coming to this conduction system of the heart okay so in this objective you will describe and compare the action potential in the heart pacemaker and contractile cells name the components of the conduction system of the heart and trace the conduction pathway draw you will learn about the ecg here and various types of uh, activities of the ecg okay so as i told you heart is generating electric impulse on its own heart is completely independent but coordinated okay so uh, the conduction system is inbuilt inside the heart the power house then power generating cells are present inside the heart okay so there is no any separate uh, uh, system that supplies the uh, electric impulse for the heart okay that's what we call it as in house conducting system okay i'll show you then if you see <coughs> uh, yeah if you look at the action potential initiation by the pacemaker cells so before this Uh, you have to know what is pacemaker cells and what is pace setter cells and what is the uh, depolarization and repolarization okay so for this you have to understand about this ecg but we are i'm going to discuss about the ecg so before that you have to know that there is some electrical activity that is taking place in the cardiac muscles okay the action potential ranges between minus 60 millivolt current to 0 millivolt uh, current okay and this is how the 
muscle keeps contracting and relaxing in the heart this is how the muscle keeps contracting and relaxing in the heart okay so the, the, the this electrical activity is called as the pacemaker potential this electrical activity is called as pacemaker potential so the this slow depolarization is due to both opening of sodium channels and closing of the potassium channels notice that the membrane potential is never a flat line there is no resting okay it continuously keeps on uh, exciting and relaxing uh, uh, contracting and relaxing relaxing that is why the electrical activity is continuously seen okay so now uh, sca node what is this sc node action potential you know uh, in the sub endocardial layer in the sub endocardial layer i will show you that okay the models if i show you and explain you will be able to understand in the sub endocardial layer there is some sc sinoatrial node cells okay so that's called as pacemaker cells they produce funny current it's a type of current okay when this current is produced there is gradual closure of potassium channels together with inward leak of sodium and calcium okay so the you know these are all the electrolyte activity that is taking place in the heart when the funny current is produced when the funny current is produced okay so if you see uh, <coughs> this is the how do acetylcholine and uh, 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 this nad and ad affects the pacemaker potential what ion channels are affected this is what you will study in the abnormal ecg okay this is what you will study in the abnormal ecg you can see here this is the uh, uh, atrium next to the coronary atrium you have the sa node in between the right atrioventricular uh, junction then that is continuing as a atrioventricular node and then it is dividing to right and left branch okay this is the right bundle this is the right bundle branch and the left bundle branch and takes the name as purkinje fibers okay so now coming coming to this uh, sa node and ab node uh, i mean the conduction system there are uh, so four components okay which will conduct the electrical impulse through this heart and make the heart muscle to contract and make the heart muscle to contract okay so sa node normally generates impulse up to 75 beats per minute okay that is what is called as a pacemaker set the pace of the heart as a whole it is called a heart pacemaker and it is them is called sinus rhythm normal heart beat we call it as sinus rhythm okay the normal heart beat we call it as the sinus rhythm then av node av node is atrioventricular node from that is a continuation of the sa node where the electrical impulse spreads to both atrium via gap junctions and stimulate them to contract and then through the internodal pathway that is called as the bundle of his okay and then uh, this uh, av node that is the bundle of his will divide into right bundle branch and the left bundle branch and this bundle branches spreads in the apex of the heart and this spreading of fibers is called as the purkinje fibers okay that is the uh, here you can see this is a sa node and this is a av node the sa node is present the next to the coronary atrium the av node is present between the right atrioventricular junction and this is continuing as a atrioventricular branch okay then uh, this is called as a bundle of his okay the av node is dividing into bundle of his this bundle divides into right bundle and the left bundle okay this bundle spreads in the apex of the heart as a purkinje fibers these are cells with special type of property that can produce electric impulse that has the property to produce electric impulse this is what you have to understand here it has the property to produce the electric impulse okay now uh, uh, this is what we call it as the conduction system of the heart okay but the heart speed the speed of the heart is regulated by the autonomic nervous system okay in you know in the autonomic nervous system you have the 
parasympathetic and the sympathetic you have the parasympathetic and the sympathetic parasympathetic nerve is a vagus nerve that is supplying the heart sympathetic nerves are coming from the thoraco th thoracic vertebras okay the parasympathetic nerve will decrease the heartbeat whereas the sympathetic nerve will increase the heartbeat okay so this is how the heart uh, speed of the heart is made for example when you run the sympathetic nerve will stimulate the heart and make the heart to beat fast so that you can pump more blood okay so this is what you have to understand between the uh, balance between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nerves okay then externally you can see this is the vagus nerve nucleus where the vagus nerve is coming innervating the heart and this is the thoracic nerve nu uh, nucleus where the uh, sympathetic trunk is coming and supplying the heart so heart is supplied by parasympathetic as well as sympathetic nerve to increase and decrease the speed of the heart okay so okay now we have to know about the depolarization and the repolarization okay as i told you whenever the action potential the sa node is uh, releasing electric impulse the, there is repolarization depolarization okay then this electric impulse will rest and that is what we call it as the repolarization okay that's what we call it as repolarization so during depolarization heart will contract during repolarization the heart will relax so contraction is called as systole relaxation of the heart is called as diastole contraction of the heart is called as systole and relaxation of the heart is called as diastole okay so uh, <coughs> there are various uh, phases that is taking place uh, there are four phase okay so what happens during the time of repolarization and depolarization this is very um, uh, critical thing you have to follow here okay during that phase one due to rapid sodium influx okay it overshoots to, to zero millivolt then that time minor repolarization is taking place so in this time sodium channels will open and will go into the cell heart cells okay then that sodium uh, sorry that potassium uh, will go into the cell that potassium will kick the calcium in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and then the uh, uh, sodium uh, potassium efflux is starting the potassium will start to come out so the this is taking place during the depolarization whereas this is uh, followed by the repolarization where the calcium channel closes and the potassium channels will open okay these are all the uh, action potential that is taking place in the heart okay you can see in minus 80 millivolt the, the action potential starts that time sodium influx is present and in phase 2 the potassium starts to gradually move inside the cell and then start to come out in the, and becomes nil in the phase 4 okay so this is how the action potential curve is present okay now